this is the scheme of blood pressure regulation. So blood pressure is regulated by three major parameters. The cardiac output, the vascular resistance, so arterial vessel tone, uh, and blood volume. So this is the mechanism which is disturbed in primary arterial hypertension. So this mechanism can be disturbed in primary arterial hypertension. <clears throat> so increase in blood volume can lead to uh, the arterial hypertension. For example, uh, administration of solutions. If we make intravenous injections, it leads to uh, it can lead to arterial hypertension because of increased total blood volume. But it is for the short period of time because due to kidney, kidney reabsorption, kidney filtration, reabsorption secretion mechanisms, the volume will be restored to normal and blood pressure will be normalized. But if there is water retention due to renal failure, the effect of uh, increased blood volume on blood pressure will be chronic. So we have renal failure in patient and we have um, chronic disturbance in his blood pressure. Uh, these kind of patients have uh, arterial hypertension. For example, uh, the patients with kidney, chronic kidney disease. Increased of water reabsorption due to hormone release, aldosterone or vasopressin can be the result of um, the diseases. It's endocrine problem which leads to arterial hypertension. Increased cardiac output also can lead to a blood pressure increase. So how to increase cardiac output? First of all, you can increase your heart rate due to activation of sympathetic system. For example, in primary hypertension, we have hypersympathetic atonia. So we have excessive activation of sympathetic nervous system. And this leads to the heart rate acceleration and increased cardiac output. And through this mechanism, we increase blood pressure, arterial blood pressure. So in patients with constitution, constitutively predisposed to hyperactivity of sympathetic nervous system, we, uh, uh, we see Often we see, we meet with uh, uh, blood pressure increase with arterial hypertension. If there is hyperthyroidism, which is endocrine problem, we also can um, see the mechanism of increased cardiac output. So uh, the thyroid gland hormone can uh, make uh, arterial hypertension through increase uh, heart rate. So in tyrotoxicosis, there is tachycardia. And through this mechanism, we have, ex again, cardiac output increase and arterial hypertension. Fever. The patients with fever also have tachycardia. And this tachycardia makes excessively high cardiac output. Increase in heart stroke volume if there is aortic valve insufficiency. Also, the mechanism uh, of uh, increased cardiac output. So, but this is the problem with valves. This is hemodynamic problems, secondary problem. This is also secondary problem. This is secondary problem, but this is the first. This is a primary hypertension. Mechanism of peripheral vascular resistance increase. 
so can be uh, due to activation of sympathetic nervous system and due to increase of phase constrictors. So let's look at this definition of our arterial hypertension. This so arterial hypertension its pathological state of persistent increase in systolic and or diastolic pressure more than 140 and 90 millimeters mercury so we need to understand that this is pure arterial hypertension so our patient has pure arterial hypertension it means that um, the criteria of arterial hypertension are uh, sufficient uh, I mean, uh, this is real hypertension because his systolic pressure is more than 140 um, and uh, the diastolic is more than uh, 90. So hypertension, you, you must understand that hypertension used as a term by itself, uh, which refers to an abnormality um, of arterial uh, pressure in the systemic regulation. And there are uh, four, um, four uh, parts of, I mean, four diapasons of uh, blood pressures. So there is optimal diapason pressure, uh, for example, systolic pressure, normally optimally is from 100 to 130 and diastolic from 60 to 80. Uh, so our patient with 165 110 is not appropriate so it, he, he has no optimal uh, blood pressure so then let's go further next diapason is prehypertensive pressure so systolic prehypertensive pressure is from 130 to 139 and diastolic from 80 to 89. So our patient is already um, other, he's in other diapason, in other part of hypertension. So where he is, he's in um, hypertension region, hypertension region. So hypertension, it is the systolic pressure more, more than 160 and diastolic more than 95. There is also borderline hypertension. So it is uh, in the middle between uh, hypertension and prehypertension. Um, systolic is 140, diastolic um, 90. So from 90 to 95 and systolic from 140 to 160. So primary hypertension and secondary hypertension, these are major parts of classification. But uh, below these primary and secondary, there is a list of other types. I mean, we, we can classify these types also. So uh, in our case uh, there is primary hypertension uh, because the patient is very young to have this increased blood pressure and we didn't reveal any uh, any disease in his renal or endocrine or uh, nervous or um, heart systems so no problem with his uh, organs intrinsic organs so uh, but there is hypertension and we don't know the reason we can only see that there is this electrolyte emia and this is very similar to one syndrome which belongs to monogenic hypertension inherited hypertension which is called Lidl syndrome Lidl syndrome Essential hypertension, it is more uh, 
widespread than monogenic, so monogenic is rare, uh, essential hypertension, it's polygenic, polyetiological uh, disease, which is provoked by uh, risk factors. So no causative factor, but risk factors. So you see, there are a lot of different endogenous and exogenous groups of factors which are modifiable and non-modifiable. Uh, so for arterial hypertension, there is also the list of risk factors which is important. So heredity, it's non-modifiable factors. We are talking about candidate genes, uh, psychological stress, it's... Uh, it's the, the key player uh, among risk factors uh, because he triggers uh, a lot of uh, negative physiological reactions in the body, like catecholamine release, vasoconstriction, peripheral uh, vessel resistance increase, heart rate increase, cardiac output increase. So this is also, this is very important. Uh, also, excessive body weight. We were talking about BMI, body mass index. It is linked with arterial hypertension and ischemic stroke. Diabetes mellitus type 2, hyperglycemia uh, with combination with atherosclerosis, hyperglycemia with uh, arterial hypertension, dyslipidemia, and obesity, it is metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome has high risk uh, or provokes the high risk of um, sudden cardiac death. So you see the arterial hypertension is triggered by diabetes mellitus type 2 and in combination with this diabetes, it can cause acute coronary syndrome. Also, increased intake of sodium chloride, this is modifiable extrinsic factor, which is for sure we can uh, limit in our life. Uh, it can uh, influence uh, very severe on uh, the development of arterial hypertension and ischemic stroke. Lack of physical exercise, also it's a modifiable factor. We can manage with this physical exercise, uh, deficiency and uh, hypodynamia. Uh, and I was mentioned already um, how the physical exercise can regulate vascular tone through the release of vasodilators, through the release of nitric oxide, and endothelium-derived hyperpolarizing factor, EDH, uh, EDH, F. Uh, smoking. Smoking is very important uh, trigger for endothelium dysfunction. Smoking makes vasoconstriction, endothelial damage, and endothelium dysfunction leads to um, atherosclerosis and uh, the arterial hypertension. So this is very important provoker of uh, the cardiovascular diseases. And among these diseases, the atherosclerosis and uh, the arterial hypertension. 